Hi again, everyone. I'm Carol Brewer. Really blessed to be with you again. I'm a proud member of Christian Women and Media Association, and this is Noon Life Prayer. Well, it's noon in the central United States, and I'm in Northern California, so it's 10 a.m. here, but it's great to be with you again. And, you know, we have a time to celebrate because we have Independence Day coming up in the United States of America, but as Christians, we celebrate independence in Christ every day. That means freedom from bondage, free from the chains that our enemy would have us be tied up in, numbing and not able to move or do things. That is the desire of our enemy, but our Lord breaks those chains and we are free in Christ, free indeed. Amen for that. And thanks for joining me as we praise him together. And let me know um, on the sidebar, please put your prayer request. Let me know how I can pray for you in the coming week. And if you missed the live presentation, it's going to be posted all during the weekend. So put your prayer request down and I'll be checking back. And my honor and privilege to pray for you in the coming week. And also, if it's an unspoken prayer, don't hesitate to just put your little hands up, hand sign up, and let me know how I can pray for you because that will, you know, just let me know that you have an unspoken prayer. And it is just an honor again to pray for you. And thanks for joining me today. Let's get right into the time that we have to praise our Lord. You know, it's a time of adoration, a really wonderful way to start our prayer time because when we realize who God is, who he is, then it really diminishes the um, somewhat. I know when we go through really difficult prayer time or really difficult situations, it's really hard to take. But we know that no matter how big our problem seems, our God is so much bigger. He's so, much, he's so magnificent. He's great. He is God the creator. And creator God, I praise you because you made the heavens, you made the highest heavens and all the starry host and the earth and all that's in it and the seas and all that is in them. You gave life to everything and the multitude of heaven worships you. That's from Nehemiah 9, 6. And you are the only God. Isaiah 45, 5 says, God, I praise you because you are the Lord and there is no other apart from you there is no god in psalm 89 8 who is like you lord god almighty you lord are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you and you are the ever everlasting and ancient of days and isaiah 9 6 says i praise you lord as the ancient of days and annual seven daniel 7 9 says that as as well and and isaiah 9 6 says that you are the everlasting Father who lives forever and ever. So we thank you and praise you, Lord, that you are the everlasting Father and the Ancient of Days. You are a loving God. 1 John 4.16 tells us, I praise you because you are loving, whose very nature is love, a loving God. Thank you, God, for your love. And thank you that you are a God of justice, Romans 3.26 says, Lord, I praise and magnify you who is just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So for a faithful God, we praise you. Deuteronomy 7.9, Heavenly Father, I give you my praise and adoration because you are a faithful God, keeping your covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love you and keep your commandments. So we are probably a thousand, thousands of generations from when Deuteronomy was written, but we thank you, Lord, that you are, you haven't withdrawn your faithfulness. You haven't changed your character, that you are just as dependable today as you were in the times of, the, of when Deuteronomy was written. Thank you, Lord, for that and a merciful God. God in Nehemiah 9.31, you are gracious and merciful, and I praise you for your great mercy. Isn't God merciful for 
uh, giving us second chances over and over again when we blow it, when we fall short, when we sin. Aren't we grateful for God's mercy? And God, my refuge and my fortress, Psalm 62, 7, I praise you, Lord, for you are my mighty rock, my fortress, a mighty rock, huge, mighty rock could be, could, a mountain could be a mighty rock, so huge, so beyond us, and our refuge that we can be safe behind. I was reminded of a whitewater rafting trip I took. You know, this is a little aside from the praise, but it is a praise because I took a whitewater rafting trip in Canada. And in the middle of the suds and the turbulence, there was a rock. And um, our guide just so expertly navigated our raft around to the backside of this huge protruding rock that was in the, the froth, the foam of the rapids. And our raft was, he, he just kind of swung it around there behind this huge rock. And it was absolutely still, like a still pool that water and all the suds and the turbulence were all around us, but we were there and, and we weren't moving. It was behind the backside of the rock. They call that in the river, they call it an eddy. And we were just, we could have stayed there all day and basked in the beautiful weather. And it was that rock that we're, we were hidden behind. So when Psalm 62, seven says, I praise you, Lord, for you are my mighty rock my refuge. Hopefully my raft story will help you understand how that can be in the turbulence, in the, the, just the busyness of life, how we can hide behind the rock and it is our perfect resting place and refuge and safe place. And that we're reminded of. We are reminded, Lord, in Second Peter 3, 9, that you were a patient, persevering God Father, I praise you because you are patient with your children, us, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Thank you for patience with me. And we do repent. We do turn around right now from our, our ways that, you know, just feel natural, our natural ways, to a spirit, Holy Spirit filled ways that supernatural strength that we have when we serve you, Lord. So we thank you for being our patient and persevering God. An eternal saving God, as June 20, Jude 25 says to us, I give praise to you, Father, the only God, our Savior. To you be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. And you are the Holy One. Revelation 4, 8. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and now and is to come. We can trust you, Lord, for our past, our present, and our future because you are the Holy One. As Revelation 4, 8 tells us, you are the Holy One we follow. Thank you, Lord. And thank you that you are a personal God. Matthew 8.11 tells us, I praise you, God, because you are a personal God who gives me the honor of knowing you personally, even inviting me to feast at your kingdom's table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we are invited to feast at the heavenly table, at the kingdom's table. And so I praise you, Lord, for Matthew, the book of Matthew that teaches us so much and that teaches us how you are a personal God. We can know you in a close, personal way, in a heart-to-heart -heart relationship because you are our best friend. Thank you for that truth and, and the confidence that we have knowing all these truths, that we can walk in faith every day, no matter the turbulence around us. So thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you. And so as Christian Women in Media being on this page, we have a special uh, heart for people in ministry. So we ask you, Lord, for your blessings on Christian television, on radio and our internet stations. 
and for those in leadership and those who influence our lives. We, we pray for media elite and managers, news anchors, publishers, and educators. Yes, we do. Talk show hosts, business executives and managers, ambassadors, theologians, ministers, and rabbis. All these people who have platforms and are in a, a place of influence. Lord, we continue to play, pray for our priests, our chaplains in the military, our elders, our pastors, deacons, lay workers in our churches, parachurch ministry heads, professors, teachers, medical practitioners, for all these people who have influence, who are in places of authority. Lord, I pray that you come to know, that they come to know you in a personal way, and they look to you for guidance and direction before making important decisions that affect all the people they have authority over. So these are our prayers for, for again, for medical practitioners, hospital administrators, scientists, researchers, inventors and engineers, athletes, actors, and entertainment figures. All these people have authority over other people. And so we pray as we, any of us who have a platform, no matter how large or small, wherever we have a place of influence, Lord, we just pray for your intercession into our lives as we ask for it, for your wisdom and guidance that we honor you and praise you and worship you through our deeds, through our decisions. This is our humble prayer, Lord. And Father God, please take the power and platform away from leaders who do not seek and honor you and give your power and platform to leaders who do. And we pray for a spiritual awakening that will penetrate the United States and all countries in the world for your glory. Right now we pray for the country of Brazil who is aligned with the United States, who is our friend and who has a president, Bonoceros I believe his name is, and he's a Christian, so he has a heart to follow you. And that is what we desire for our country as well, as leaders who have a heart to follow you and, and um, seek you first. So God, we just pray for all leaders, especially leaders in countries who go to your word for wisdom and truth as they lead. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Isaiah 58, 19, 59, 19 says, in the West, people re will respect the name of the Lord. In the East, they will glorify him, for he will come like a raging flood, tide driven by the breath of the Lord. So Lord, that's the kind of turbulence we need, you coming like a raging tide, because it would be your Holy Spirit hovering over our land. And this is our fervent, fervent prayer. And, and it goes on to say in Isaiah 59, 19, or the enemy, or when the enemy comes like a raging flood, the spirit of the Lord will drive him back. We can just praise you, Lord, for that promise. And for our military and law enforcement and their families here and abroad, oh Lord, how we pray for their safety, calm and peace, and a protection, your Holy Spirit, your full armor of God that, that will protect their hearts and minds as they serve you on our behalf for our country. And for our country, as we, as we are approaching Independence Day, that a new spiritual awakening will spread across the United States and all countries in the world, all for your glory. And Father God, please calm the storms around the world. Calm the storms at our southern border. Oh God, calm the storms in Ukraine, how we pray for the people that are suffering there, and the storms in our communities, in our schools, for protection and wisdom from our leaders, our school leaders and, and regional superintendents of schools, how important as they make laws. And for our government, our government, our national government in the United States, our government in our states, our government local and 
and regional governments, how we pray for leaders that will follow you and will have wisdom in dealing with so many storms that are going on right now. And so, Father God, please, as we ask again, calm these storms and we ask for healing for our hearts, all of us. And I pray for the families and the great losses of those who've passed away. Lord, from COVID, from the elements, Lord, those crossing in the southern border. And so many things that will break our hearts. But you are the heart healer, God, and we thank you and praise you for that. Thank you, Lord, for your never-ending faithfulness and love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your abundant blessings and provisions. Thank you for security in you, for us, for our families, for our friends, our neighbors, our area that we live in. Thank you, Lord, for security in you. Thank you for the support and friendship of our sisters in Christ and for our brothers, too. How grateful we are for your perfect appointed timing in all things, for your mercy, grace, and forgiveness thank you thank you Lord that our hope and victorious future are in you alone thank you for hearing our hearts and fulfilling all our needs you are all sufficient and we praise you for that amen and Exodus 15 2 a the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation is he your salvation today that's my prayer for all of us that we know him in a personal way and that we receive and embrace his love and perfect provision for us, a way out of those chains that of bondage that we are free in our independence is you, Lord, how we thank you. So have a wonderful independence weekend as we celebrate and remember as I am reminded each day that it is a chance to walk with this new day that we have in newness of life with our precious as savior and our precious lord so let's all walk together shall we in newness of life with him god bless you have a great day i look forward to praying with you next week fridays at noon um, and that's on the christian women in media facebook page and also on mine bible chicks with Carol. Thank you for joining me there. And remember, we have Noon Live Prayer every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on the Christian Women in Media Facebook page. So thank you for joining us. No better time than praying right now. So keep on praying and again, walking each day in newness of life with Him. God bless you. Have a great day.